When studying classification, it's kind of annoying to teach it because when life started, it forgot to make a textbook to make things nice and simple and easy for us. And instead of just having maybe one kingdom or two kingdoms or three kingdoms, it winds up having this mess. And when people started studying it, they said, okay, there's plants and animals. Then other people came along and said, uh, what about things like fungi? They don't, they're not really plants because they don't make their own food. And then people eventually came up with a five kingdom system. Well, unfortunately, that is falling by the wayside too. But we're left with this mess called the Protus. They used to be all gathered together into one big happy kingdom called the Protus Kingdom. But now everybody's saying, but they're not one big kingdom. They're actually this whole mess of lots of other kingdoms. But we still like to talk about them. So I'm going to go through some of the basics of the Protus. The Protus can be kind of subdivided into two major groups. But what those groups all share is that they're eukaryotes and they reproduce mainly asexually using mitosis. That doesn't mean that they can't do meiosis, some of them do, but usually they reserve meiosis, which is, or me, meiosis, which is the correct pronunciation. They use that primarily for extreme circumstances because that's sexual reproduction. And they figure, hey, if I'm reproducing asexually, life is good for me, so if I clone myself asexually, life will be good for my descendants. It's only when life starts to get bad that they say, uh-oh, my genes aren't good enough, maybe I can try a new combination. It's time to have some sex. They range in size from unicellular, individual single-celled organisms, to multicellular. Things like kelp is lumped together originally into the protus uh, kingdom. And they're huge. They can be over 150 feet long. Now, the two major groups are the protozoa, and their name means early animals. And they, in general, are heterotrophic. And then there's the algae, which are generally autotrophic. Heterotrophic means that you hunt down other things and you consume them for their food. Autotrophic means that you generally make your own food. But what you'll find, and this is one of the reasons why this grouping hasn't really worked out so well, is that some of the protozoa, yeah, they'll eat other things, but they may also do some photosynthesis. And sometimes some of them will eat some of the algae and then use them as reserve photosynthetic organisms inside of themselves while continuing to eat other things. It's kind of freaky weird. So let's take a look at the protozoa. They are a very diverse organization. They include things ranging from amoeba to slime molds to things called paramecium that use little cilia to move around. While within the algae, you get a wide range of things, ranging from the green algae, which are the ancestors to our modern land plants, to the glass cell-walled uh, diatoms, which are a major photosynthetic uh, organism in our oceans, to things as big and huge and multicellular as the brown algae. So as you can see, the protus kingdom is huge, and that's why nobody really uses it anymore, except as a matter of convenience.